Now I'm going to show you how to do foreground mountains, or mountains that look like they're closer to us, and also a way of showing you how to create more texture to your mountains so that when they dry they feel like real rocks. I'm using a palette knife and I've just scraped some of the paint or cut across it um, to get a roll. And I'm just basically for um, demonstration purposes, I've just added a little blue and black, um, mixed it up together, and that's what I cut across to get the roll. Now I'm going to turn my blade so that my blade is at a diagonal. And you can see there's the pointed part here. That's going to resemble the peaks. If I tilt it this way, you'll see in my distant um, mountains, that's the angle that I gave those, or this one in particular, this one here. But I'm going to start out a little steeper for the uh, um, for people to ski down the slope. Now I'm just touching the canvas, so the paint touches the canvas, and I'm just wiggling, moving my arm up and down. Let me get a little bit more paint so that you can see me do this on my knife. Well, the more you shake, the more you wiggle your arm, the more you'll get more interesting peaks. Now because I'm using thicker paint right now, it's going to be very textured. Now I can turn my knife so that the slope goes this way. I can go back with another peak here. I can pull it all the way to the end of the canvas to finish that side up. And I can go back up here and add some more. Maybe there's taller mountains over here on the left. And I've already placed in the distant mountains, so you can see just by adding this darker value what that did to the distant mountains. Made, pushed them back, made them look further away. Now I'm just going to come up here. If I pull sideways, that creates a square top on my mountain peaks. I see a lot of these in Arizona. If I just touch and then pull down, that makes a more pointy peak. <clears throat> there's so many different shapes of peaks, so there's nothing you can do that's going to be incorrect as long as they're all different in height, different as far as widths apart from each other. See how far this one is from here? And this one's closer to the uh, tallest one. Once I do this, I scrape the paint off beneath my top shape. And that's because the next couple of steps that I'm going to show you, you don't want to have the texture on yet because that's when we add texture after we blend this. So I'm holding my handle straight out. If you do it this way and just scrape, you're just uh, blending that in. That's why I hold my handle straight out. There we go. And I'm just going to wipe off my knife. And I'm picking up a one inch landscape brush just to blend what I've accomplished so far. And if I tilt my bristle so it's lined up with the shape that I created, and go from there and pull to the right and then just go back and forth to blend it in. I'm going to be wiping off my brush off from canvas or <laughs> camera periodically. Now if I pull to the right, do you see how it's giving that illusion that the slope is going to the right? If I pull to the left it gives that illusion that the slope of this mountain peak is going to the left. And I'm just blending it, coming down with my arm until it disappears. So I don't have any sharp, uh, harsh edged uh, colored lines like this one. This is too, uh, stands out too much. This area here, you get a natural change in color, and that's what you're looking for when you're trying to accomplish this at home. Now I can pull this one to the right, and see how that automatically puts that mountain peak in front of the rest.
This is a great way to practice. Just spend some quality time for yourself. And just uh, take an inexpensive canvas and start practicing. I have one that's about, oh, 25 years old. Could be longer. I've been saying that for a couple of years now. There we go. And just practice. Practice clouds, skies, mountains, trees, whatever you want. And then just wipe it off with some thinner. And I'll be ready for you to have more fun another day. Now I've blended all of the mountain areas. I've kept the edges of the peaks untouched. I'm going to go back now with my mixture. And I'm going to use a, a lighter shade of blue, so hopefully you can see this. And the key to this step, before the knife touched the canvas, this time the key is the paint that's on the knife touches the paint that's up here. So it's a very light pressure. Now I'm barely touching the canvas. I'm going up to the left side of a peak and I'm just touching so my knife is at an angle and I'm wiggling with my arm as I come downward. Now what that does is that creates openings where you see the underpainting color through your paint. Let me get that a little bit brighter so you can hopefully see better. 